the river Calder has left its steep upland section and started to broaden out. As the altitude drops, temperatures rise, rainfall is lower and agriculture is easier. We are now in the middle course of this river and meadows are starting to appear on the valley floor. The steep valley sides have moved further apart. Here the Calder is starting to sweep downstream in broad curves. Having passed through the old industrial towns of Hebden Bridge and Salby Bridge, we are now 30 kilometres from the source of this river. There are 170 kilometres to go before this water will reach the sea. For now there is less of an industrial feel to the river, but as we will see, industry is never far from the river Calder. Most rivers are at their most powerful just at the point when they leave their upland sections. The amount of energy in the river is linked to how much water, how fast it's flowing and how steep the river's course. 95% of a river's energy is lost through friction with the bank, the beds, obstructions and vegetation. That leaves only 5% for carrying out erosion and transporting the bed load. The sum total of a river's energy gradually declines as it moves downstream. One result is that it can't carry the larger pieces of bed load that it was able to shift in its upper section. In the middle section, the size of the fragments is smaller. On this stretch, the Calder does another one of the classic pieces of physical geography, meanders. Meanders of all shapes and sizes. Meanders can crop up anywhere along the course of a river, but they are always much more frequent, larger and more curvy in the lower reaches. In a straight river channel, pools and riffles will develop as water twists and turns around obstructions such as large boulders. This results in areas of slower and faster water movement. Pools are areas of deep water and greater erosive energy due to less friction. Riffles are areas of shallow water created by deposition of coarse sediment. Once pools and riffles have developed, the river flows from side to side in a winding course. This simple diagram shows how the corkscrew-like flow of water moves material from the outside of one meander and deposits it on the inside of the next bend. Water moving faster has more energy to erode. This occurs on the outside of the bend and forms a river cliff. Water moving more slowly has less energy to transport material and it deposits some of it on the inside bend. The river erodes the outside bends through hydraulic action and corrasion. Water moves more slowly on the inside of the bend and the river deposits some load, forming a gently sloping river beach called a slip-off slope. These geese realise it is easier to tread water on the inside bend of the meander. The water is moving more quickly on the outside. Continuous erosion on the outer bank and deposition on the inner causes the meander to migrate downstream and change shape over time. 50 kilometres from the river's source and the feeling of being in a valley has completely disappeared. The lowlands of the floodplain extend on each side of the river. With the climate getting warmer all the time, agriculture can now include arable crops like oilseed rape. However, here near Dewsbury, industry is back again on the riverbanks, and we can recognise channel straightening and navigations that were introduced in the past to make river transport easier to manage. We can continue to trace the original course of the river though there are numerous places where the channel is split or its course changed. The city of Wakefield is the last major settlement we will pass through on the Calder. It was the waterfront and waterways that allowed Wakefield to prosper in the early ages, with transport links allowing it to be a hub of industry, lined with mills and warehouses, maltings and other businesses. We are now close to the point where this river joins the River Eyre, but there is still time to describe one last physical feature that we find in the flat lower reaches of a river, 
before our journey along the calder ends. River meanders are constantly changing their position. At this particular spot, where we have a wonderful looping meander, it is possible to project what is going to happen next. Maximum erosion is on the outside of the bends, where the water is running fastest, and it will extend the loop of the meander. Continual erosion and deposition will narrow the neck of the meander. At some point, probably during a flood, the river will cut through the neck. If that happens, the river will then continue on its straighter path and the meander will be abandoned. New deposition seals off the ends and the cutoff becomes a marvellous geographical feature, which is an oxbow lake that will eventually dry up. Further along the river, channel straightening by engineers has led to the same feature. The river was straightened in the past to help speed up water transport and it has cut through where the river used to meander. Alongside the river we can now observe unnaturally created oxbow lakes. 72 kilometres from its source we come to the end of the river Calder. Though it certainly isn't the end of our journey. The Calder now joins the River Eyre and the combined watercourse continues on through Castleford. Join us in the next video when we will look at the lower course and discover what happens as the river finally meets the sea.